we have groups of stories where um, they're part of teachings. Um, for example, when a young boy becomes a man, there are certain stories there, okay? And also for the girls too, when girls are on their way to becoming women, there's uh, groups of stories that they are told too also. And so this is, uh, some of those stories can really fit a Halloween theme, okay? So let's start in this area, because really there's lots of different stories to tell. Um, even part of um, when we got the sacred white buffalo calf pipe, there's one part of that story that is really scary. And uh, most Lakota people don't even know that part. Yeah, just just a few of us that know the complete version of the story. And um, but there is one scene in this part where it's it's really 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 scary. But it it always all these stories they point out to the fact that reality begins within. So. How you are as a person determines largely the outcome of your life. Now, that's not taking into consideration things that happen out of the blue, because sometimes those things occur too, okay? And that we cannot control, because that is nature, and nature was not meant to be controlled, okay? Yeah, there's there's a lot of stories that could fit in there, and um, so I'm going to begin with um, the girl, the the stories that are told to young girls. Um, yeah, they have to hear these stories before they reach puberty. Okay, and they have to know these before they reach puberty. So that means they're going to start to hear these stories when they're about eight, nine years old. And you have to re keep in mind that in ancient times, there, you know, we were living with nature. So we've, as young children, excuse me, sorry about that. We have seen a lot of things that today's children don't really see. For example, when somebody dies, uh, like a death, like a funeral. I mean, you see people dying in movies and stuff, but you don't see the funeral. That can really take an emotional toll. So it's important to have an emotional foundation, a healthy foundation. And this is what happened to a lot of the young boys and young girls. They were taken by the various men's and women's societies and throughout the day were taught things according to their talents yeah the older people taught the younger people how to develop their talents and to learn to use it for the good of the community because they're thinking in a community perspective from the very beginning because of our family structure called tioshpae and just to give you a quick example of what that is imagine yourself your mother and her sisters are all your mothers. Their husbands are all your fathers. Their children are all your brothers and sisters. Okay, so you got lots of moms and dads. Okay. Your mother's brothers are your uncles. Their wives are your aunts. And their children are your cousins. Okay, that's your mom's side. Now let's go to your father's side. Your father and his brothers are your fathers too. And their wives are your other mothers. And their children are your other brothers and sisters. Your father's sisters are your aunts. And their husbands are your other uncles. And their children are your other cousins. So you got lots of moms and dads on both sides of the family, okay? So the whole community is raising all the children. That's what's happening. This is the only way it works. 
when you don't have this, you end up with the world like today. Yeah? And um, so this is important. The Teoshpai system can break a lot of unhealthy things that are happening in this world today. Like duality. Yeah? Can transform it. Anyway, um, so the young, young children, as they're getting older, they're becoming adolescent, they are taught these stories by the adults to it's not to scare them but it's to show them what can happen if you choose to focus only on the superficial things in life okay so an example you see a you're a girl and you see a good looking guy what you think is good looking so you go after him and oh you know you throw yourself at him and everything and you know bad bing bad boom and you have a kid and you get married and you think you're happily yeah but you don't really know each other you're just with each other because you both like the way each other looks that's not going to work that's not love. That's lust. But it's not love. Okay? So, um, these stories have to do with things like that. And how dangerous the situation can be. So, for the girls, they're called elk man stories. And I have to... Um, Make a um, no. I won't do it now. I'll do it later. Okay. I will do this part. There's another thing too that involves the elk, and I'll explain that later. Okay. But an elk man is somebody who is charismatic. Sometimes they're not even good looking. They're just charismatic. They have a certain odor. Um, very strong. So this is talking about. You know, working on that. What do you call that? The you know, when it has to do with smell. There's a word for that scientific word, and I forgot the name. E, I forgot the name. But uh, they they give off a certain smell that women who are weak um, fall victim to it. And this is how he enchants women. And just he can get any woman he wants and he just uses them for sex then he goes and gets another one so we're looking at things like sex addiction um which really is not a pleasurable thing you some people might think oh man I'd love that addiction just have sex all day long but you know what when you when you're a sex addict you don't feel it anymore yeah, you don't feel that pleasure anymore. Now you're like a machine. And you're just doing it because you're addicted to it, but you don't feel the pleasure anymore. That's really, uh, what do you call that? Um, you know, it's something, it's, it's, it's like a paradox. Yeah, that, that you constantly need it, but you don't enjoy it. It's a really a horrible addiction to have. Yeah. Because it's, it's something that should be beautiful. It's something that should feel good. But when you're a sex addict, it doesn't feel good anymore. That's crazy. Yeah? It's hard to imagine, but that's how addiction is. So anyway, in, in these stories, um, there's a lot of things in common. There's many, many, many elk man stories. Okay? And um, like I said, they're very charismatic. They're very charming. Um, they know, you know, they they know when a woman is falling under their influence, and they start to manipulate it. They manipulate the situation by really giving that woman attention and making her feel, you know, that she's the all most important woman in the universe. And but he he does it in overdrive. Yeah, he does it in overdrive so that. The woman is, she's, 
feeling like she's being swept off her feet. Okay? So, um, so in this, um, in, in this is, this is kind of what happens. And then, and then usually he's, he takes her and then he's with her, has sex with her. And when he's done with her, he throws her away and gets another one. But the other one, the, the first one still wants him and she'll do anything to get him back. Yeah, so now you have all these women that are fighting to get this one man. And um and and you know, they're all hoping he's gonna make them his wife. But the result is not what they expect. Okay? So let's look at this. Let's look at one of these stories. Okay. Like I said, there's many of these stories. They all follow a similar theme. But the the endings differ, okay? The endings differ, as you'll see in the story. In this story, there's a village, and it's in a valley. In a lot of uh, traditional Lakota villages, they they were located in strategic geographical positions. So if you could find a valley that has a river going through it, that's very strategic. Because that means from the distance nobody knows there's a village there. Because it just looks like it just looks like straight flat prairie land. When you're from a distance, you don't know. Yeah. So it's always a good idea to have a, a that your village is located in a strategical place geographically. So this village was in the valley, and the people were there, and sometimes visitors come. Yeah, relatives. And this guy just popped up out of the blue. He just suddenly there's a guy walking into the village. In 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 long time ago it was a dangerous time, so there's always lookout, you know, lookout stations where you have different warriors looking over the horizon, scanning to see if there's an enemy coming. But this one man, he somehow made it through there. And he walked into the village. So when somebody's walking into the village, they assume, yeah, the people in the village assume that he must be okay because the um, security didn't stop him. The warriors didn't stop him. So the fact that he's walking into the village, the people think, oh, he's he's okay. Yeah. So he comes walking in, he's friendly to everybody and suddenly the women notice him and they start they start to um follow him around and and um and he's really nice to them and and they start you know throwing themselves at him basically and there's even married women that are that are that are giving this guy a lot of affection and um when you know evening comes, so he's a guest, yeah. So when the, when evening comes, all the women are feeding him and and stuff like that. And and in our culture, the teepee belongs to the woman. So as as they're getting ready, you know, to go to bed, to go to sleep, all these women are fighting each other, you know, all offering him a place to stay in their teepee. So he looks and picks the, what he thinks is the prettiest woman and goes to her teepee. And the others are all mad, but at the same time, they're all in love, you know, with this guy. They're all falling in love with this guy. And so he stays with this woman and he decides, um, you know, he's going to stay with her for a few days. And um, And then afterwards, he chooses another woman. And another woman, and another, and another. And pretty soon, he's sleeping with married women. And the men are starting to get concerned after he sleeps with the first married woman. They confront him and they say, hey, that's a married woman. You can't be, you can't be doing that. And he says, oh, I didn't know. I'm sorry, he says. She told me she was single. And she probably did. Because the women... Like this, they will say anything. 
Yeah. So she probably did tell this man that she was not married. So, so he said this, this man, the, the, I'll call him the guest. Okay. I will say the guest. The guest told the other men that this woman told her, told him that uh, she was single. And so he really apologized. Yeah. He really apologized and, and he, um, he he apologized to the man to the to the man the husband and he um he went out and um um you know he he went out and he, don't know where he went but he came back with some horses and he gave this husband the horses as an apology he said she told me she was uh single and i, I if i knew she was married I would not have done that, he said. So he gave these horses to the man as an apology. So this shows the people that he's willing to, you know, that if he does something wrong that he didn't know, he didn't realize that it was the fault of the other person and that he he's trying to show he's a good guy by saying, I'm, I'm sorry, please accept these gifts as part of my apology and I, I I will not even look at her. That's what he said. So they took the man took the uh, the gifts and and so that the the guest never looked at that woman again. He kept his word. Yeah. But remember, there's lots of women in this village. So he goes and and he's pretty soon, you know, he's he's there for a whole month. And um, he's been with a hell of a lot of women during that time. So the men are starting to get concerned because they thought, well, maybe he's going to choose one of their women as a wife. But instead, it looks like he's just playing. Like he's just there to have sex and nothing more. And so they ask him, um, you know, what are, what is your intention? And, you know, because it seems like you're just goofing around. And he said, no, he said, I came to choose a wife, he said. And and um, I want to, uh, you know, find the girl who is the best for me. And then I'll ask, the fa- I'll ask her and her family um, to marry her. And uh, so when the, when these ladies heard him say that, they all got excited because... They all want to be his wife. And um, and so it turns out that um, that he doesn't choose anybody. He still continues to to um, just you know visit TP to TP to TP, just you know, being with women and having sex. So the men um are thinking, you know, we have to get rid of him somehow. And um so they they invite him on a on a buffalo hunt. So they go on a hunt with him and, and the women are all sad because he's gonna be gone for the day. Maybe he's gonna be gone several days. They take him way out in the country and they kill him. And um and they they leave him out there, yeah. And when they come back to the camp, he's already there. <laughs> he's back in the camp, and so the all the guys are saying, they're saying, "Shoot, what what's going on here?" Because they they left him, yeah, several hours earlier, and he was dead. And by the time they return home, he's already back at the camp. He's he's uh. He says to the men, "Oh, there you guys are." He said, "I got lost and and I was just wandering around and, I, and then I, I managed to find my way back." He said, "I couldn't find you guys." He said, and he 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 tried to make it look like it was his own fault, like like he he um, got lost. Yeah, so the men would still look good in the women's sight. You know what I mean? The argument. So the men are just baffled. They don't. They don't know what you know. My goodness, what's what are we dealing with here? They killed him, but he he came back. 
so then um the next thing is they uh they um they say okay let's let's uh let's you know there's only one one thing we can do is you know that we have to do it so that he can't come back together i mean he can't come back at all so the only thing they thought of was to okay we'll we have to somehow cut him up into pieces and then you know everybody go to a different location burn those pieces and you know everybody takes one piece and burn it and then you know throw it in the ground dig a really really deep hole throw it in the ground and cover it up again so they they devised the plan where they were going to play a game it's called the shinny game it's kind of like lacrosse and they were going to like field hockey okay the game is kind of like that so they were going to invite the man to play with them and but they wanted to wait until there was a day when it was really 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 windy so that when you know they used like sticks like like hockey sticks and um you know that they were all going to you know run to clear end of the other side of the village and um really beat the ground with the sticks so that a lot of dirt comes up and the wind's going to blow it yeah so this creates like a screen and then in that dust cloud what they were going to do is drag the uh, knock the guy out and then drag him into some trees and then cut his body into six different pieces and they were going to go in different directions and um travel for um for 3 days and then dig a hole you know on the fourth day dig a hole wherever they are and make the hole as deep as themselves so it's going to be a, a very deep hole okay and then to burn the body piece and then throw the ashes into the hole and then cover it up and then come back that that was the plan okay so they're waiting and waiting and waiting and finally several days later it's a really windy day so they invite this man to they invite the guest to play the shinny game with them and he says oh no he said i don't want to play but then the girls are all saying oh go ahead they cuz they want to see him move yeah they want they like the way he moves and runs and walks and, and they want to watch his body in action so he says oh, okay so he joins the the men out there so they're playing this game and then they they manage to hit the ball clear on the opposite side of the village where there's some trees and then the uh, a lot of the men start hitting the ground see they're pretending they're all hitting this ball and the people can't see because it's far away so um they create this huge dust cloud and then some other men grab this guy then they hit him on the head with a club and knock him out and then they they cut him up into pieces and into six big pieces yeah so they they like it's almost like they quarter his body yeah but it's six pieces not four and then they they take it each man there's six different men and each man takes a piece and and they get on a horse and run as far as they can all day long for 3 days without stopping maybe they stop to drink water but they continue to go and go and go so they're going to travel a long distance all opposite directions okay so they're all far away from each other on the fourth day they stop burn that body piece and then they they dig a hole and then they throw the ashes in there then they cover the hole up again and then they they travel back to the camp okay so meanwhile as those guys take off with the body parts the the game um ends and the men come back and the and the women are, are looking for the guest yeah 
and they don't see him. So they say, what, what happened? So they said, well, somebody hit the ball. Uh, I think the guest hit the ball way over there. So he went after it. He, we were waiting for him to come back, but he didn't come back. So we just decided to end the game. So the women are sad because he didn't come back. So they're thinking that he doesn't want any of the women. So they start feeling sad that maybe they didn't do enough for him. Maybe they didn't have enough sex with him or whatever. So they're all feeling bad. Yeah? And <laughs> the women who are married to these six men who took the body parts, that they're not even concerned that, <laughs> that their husbands have been gone for several days. Yeah, They're just sad that the guest is gone. It doesn't even bother them that their husbands are missing. So after about a week or so, after the game is over, those six guys come back and they meet with the men and they said, yeah, they all did what they agreed to do. So, you know, the, the village was starting to return to a sense of being normal. Yeah. A few days went by. Suddenly, there's somebody walking into the village. He's carrying something. So then they um, they they see they see this this person coming in. Again, they they assume he's a nice guy because he got past the security. So he comes in, and then the women all recognize that it's that guy, the guest. That he came back. And now the men are shocked. Now they don't know what to do. He came back. He's all put together again like nothing ever happened. And the guest, he's all friendly. And he says to the men, he said, yeah, I couldn't find that ball. He said, so I made a new one for you guys. He said, so he throws them a new ball. <laughs> and he he proceeds to go with the women again and the men are at his mercy they don't know what to do yeah then finally after several months went by he chooses a woman to be his wife and she's all happy and and uh, the family they feel they have no choice because they feel the woman is going to go with him no matter what. So the whole camp agrees, okay, as long as he's out, as long as he's no longer living there, that they just want him out. Yeah, so the, he, he marries this girl, and he's going to take her back to his home now. And traditionally, it was the other way around. Usually when a man came, when a man and woman married, usually... They stayed with her camp, so this was uh, different. But the people they didn't they weren't concerned. They just wanted him out. The men, I should say, they wanted him out, so they were happy that he was going to take this girl away. As long as he's not in their camp anymore. So they have a marriage ceremony. Nothing special, and then. And then he gives gifts to the girl's family. Then, then he takes the girl with him back to his village. That's what he tells them. It's across a big river that really moves fast. Okay? A really big river that moves very, 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 very fast. And um, when he gets there, he tells the woman, to um, get on his back, yeah, and that he will swim across. And uh, so he, they slowly, they start going across the the um, the river. And when they're in the middle of the river, you see, they're both wet, yeah. They're from the water. Their hair is wet, and on the back of his head, the hair. It's kind of ghost. It kind of splits apart, yeah. And she sees something move, and she thinks, "Is that a bug?" Yeah. 
So she looks really careful at the back of his, you know, at the back of his head, and suddenly two eyes open, and the mouth smiles. He has a second face. <gasps> oh my God! There's a second. He has a second face, and it's it's in the back of his head. And she goes <gasps> like that. And so the guest says, what's wrong? And then the eyes close and the mouth closes. And she doesn't know what to think. And then the guest says, or I should say, I'll, now I will call him her husband, okay? I will now call the guest her husband. So now her husband, he's all concerned. He says, are you okay? Yeah? And she says, yeah, yeah, I'm okay. When they get to the other side, he's super nice to her. So she rationalizes it away. She thinks, oh, maybe I was just hallucinating. Yeah, she she starts thinking, maybe, maybe it was because I was scared of the water that I I I'm hallucinating. So you see, she's she's starting to rationalize it away. Then they continue the journey, and and you know he he provides food for her. He says it's several more days journey, and um, finally they get to the village. Ah, uh, and it's not a village; it's just one TV. And uh, and there's a bunch of skeletons laying outside the TV. They're human skeletons. But the woman, she starts to rationalize that. And she says, well, maybe these are just animal skeletons. And when they threw them on the ground, they fell in such a way that it looks like a human. But it's really an animal. It's a bunch of animals. That's She starts to rationalize and force herself to think like that. So then uh, he go. He takes her into the teepee, and he says, "This is this is my mother." And there's an old woman there, and she's uh, and rocks. Yeah, so she's putting the rocks into the kettle, and um, and. Uh, You know, she's uh, getting ready. And then he says that, uh, you know, that he's going to go, um, he's going to go kill something. Yeah, he's going to go kill an animal for their meal tonight. So he says, he says to his new wife, just lay down, rest, you know, take a nap and go to sleep. He said, "I'm I'm still strong, so I'm going to um, g- um, go hunt an animal, a deer or something, and so we will have something nice to eat tonight." So um, the woman says, "Okay." So she lays down, and it's still afternoon, though. Yeah, it's it's not nighttime yet. And um, so when he um, he leaves. Um, the old woman says, yeah, we're going to eat really good tonight. And I uh, said, uh, my son is a good hunter. He said, you can tell by all the bones you see outside. He's a good hunter, he said. And we, we really eat good. So we're, we're going to eat good tonight, she said. And then, um, then the old lady um she went outside. She was looking around, and she came back in, and um, and um, she had a strange look on her face. Yeah. So the girl was starting to get concerned, and then the grandma said, um, "I'm going to go find some more." Um, um, berries to to make a juice tonight she said and uh, 
She told the girl, just stay here and rest, she said, and uh, I'll be right back. So she goes, and the girl, she can't fall asleep because she feels nervous, yeah? So she looks around the teepee, and she sees that there are bags, yeah, uh, hanging in the, on the teepee poles, and she opens one, and she sees, like, like um like fingers yeah like human fingers in one of the bags and she goes oh! she drops the bag and she's like what is this she doesn't want to touch it and she looks into a second bag and and she sees like like um body parts that look like um um parts of the vagina of uh, yeah and then she she recognizes that and then she knows that something is really wrong and she goes outside the teepee and she really looks at these bones closely and she realizes these must be women and she starts to think oh no he's going to they're going to eat me she realizes that they're going to eat her. So she she decides to, uh, you know, try to escape. She's trying to run away. But the husband catches her and brings her back and says, uh, I told you to go to sleep, he said. So go to sleep. Now he's starting to sound mean. And she's scared. So she says, okay. I'll go to sleep. Just then, the grandmother, uh, the boy, the guy's mom walks in. She looks like an old lady. So, The guy's mother walks in. She's an old lady. And he gets mad at his mother. And he says, make sure she goes to sleep and make sure she doesn't leave. Because we're going to have a feast tonight. He keeps saying that. So the grandmother, I mean, the old lady says, okay. So then uh, to make sure that she stays, she ties her down to the ground. Yeah, She ties leather uh, uh, ropes to you know each of her legs and each of her arms so that the girl is like spread eagle, you know, laying, laying on the ground spread out. And her arms and legs are tied to different teepee poles so she can't get up. And then to make sure, she gets the girl's hair, spreads it out, and ties the hair to the ground too so that, you know, so that nothing will, so that there's no way she can escape. And evening is starting to come and uh, the old woman said, you know, I now I know you can't go anywhere, so I'm gonna go get some some uh some wild rice to eat with our, our meal tonight. We're gonna eat really good, she said. And then she leaves. The now the lady she starts to cry, she doesn't know what to do. Just then she hears a sound near her feet. So she's trying to look down there and uh and the animal comes in. She doesn't know what it is because she can't see. And the animal starts to chew on the rope that's holding her her um, legs. Then it, it then the, the another one comes in, another animal, and it chews on the other rope. And then it 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 uh, it chews on the ropes of that could tie her hands down. And they're freeing her. And with her hands free, she's able to, you know, un- undo her hair so that, um, so that um, what do you call it, she can um, escape. And, that, and she follows, the, the, these, uh, she sees that these animals are beavers, and they seem to want her to follow them. So one goes out the hole that they came in, the other one's standing there like it's waiting so she goes through it, then it's following her. So there's one beaver in front of her, one beaver behind her. So she realizes that they're trying to help her. 
So she runs, yeah, she runs following the one in front and the one, there's one behind her. And they get to this river and they start to make a dam. Yeah, there's one in front and one in back. As the one in front is making the dam, the one behind her is taking it apart and throwing the sticks to the one in the front. So this is how they're going to cross this river. They're crossing it at a different area where the water is running even faster than before. When they get to the middle of the river, by then the husband has realized that the woman has escaped. The way he found her was there was still some of her hair on the ground in the teepee and he was able to use the the tomb this is a, a spiritual essence that's in the hair he was able to to use the tomb and smell it and so that he could find where she ran almost like a like a dog what a dog does hound dog he was able to do this so she knows there's something not right about this man. Because he knew exactly where to look. So he starts to swim across, but the water's too fast. Carries him downstream, and his head hits a rock. And he gets knocked out. See, she can see his body, his unconscious body, flowing further down. So the beavers continue to make the dam so she can get across. And then they they continue, yeah, they continue running and she follows them. And they get to a hilltop and she sees her village in the distance. So they take her to a certain point until the guards see her. They go up to her and they realize it's it's their the woman that just left a few days earlier and she's all shaken yes yeah, she's traumatized because she realized that this was not a good man and that he's like a monster and uh, so they, the, the security takes her back into the camp and they're all happy to see her and she survived an elk man Because most women don't. They end up being devoured by him. He uses them. And then he eats them. That means he destroys their lives. So. They take her into the camp. They have a celebration. And and the other women are really scared. Because they realize this could have happened to them. That maybe. They wouldn't have been as strong as her, and maybe they would have been dead. So they all realize what happened was a very dangerous thing. And now this woman is going to grow up to become a very, very wise woman because she saw, she married an elk man and survived because when the elk man takes a woman she most of the time she doesn't survive he's going to use her abuse her until she's destroyed and what that means is is that mentally she's going to be fucked up for the rest of her life That's what the story means. Yeah? So when he devours her, this means that her flesh is, is she's not going to be beautiful anymore. And she's going to live in such a way as to, um, you know, kind of um, destroy herself. She could develop into a borderline personality, become bipolar, or something worse. 
So it's very dangerous. So the skeletons outside the tipi, those represent all the women that he's destroyed. And the and and the fact that her his mother has to do what he tells her to do shows you that see in the Lakota way they always say you treat women the way you treat your mother and your daughters and your grandmother and granddaughters. So the way he abused his mother means he abuses all women. How that works? So then, um, his uh, the woman now. Remember what I said when she saw when he took her across the river the first time, that um, she saw this second face, scared the shit out of her. Instead of saying, "Oh no, let me go," and and then swimming the other way. She just rationalizes it and saying, oh, maybe I was hallucinating because I was so tired. Because she see this guy is really good looking to her. And she, when something doesn't fit, she rationalizes it away by saying, oh, maybe it's me. Maybe it's my fault. Yeah. I must have did something wrong. They blame themselves right away because they cannot accept the uh, the uh, fact that their husband is a bad person. So instead, they blame themselves. Yeah. And then him being really nice to her is part of keeping her uh, in denial. And then seeing all the skeletons on the on the ground and saying, "Oh, they must be animal skeletons," and and that when they threw them on the ground, they just landed like they look like human skeletons. See, she's rationalizing everything away until she realizes she's gonna be the meal. Then she wakes up. She looks at the bags that are hanging in the teepee. One bag has fingers in it and the other one has uh, parts of the women's vaginas in it and that's what wakes her up some women might even try to rationalize that and those are the women who become new uh, members to the skeleton collection on the ground outside the teepee so some women, they will even rationalize that. This woman, she, she thought, oh, there's no way. There's something really wrong. And she decided, this is a monster. In Lakota, this is what you call anukite. Not anungite. Anungite is a different thing. I'll talk about that on, on another evening, okay? Because that also fits the Halloween uh, theme too <laughs> okay but this one it's called Anukite okay Anukite it's a abbreviated form of two words okay and um, this is the elk man and um, she survived so look at the look at the symbolizations here and usually you see this happen all the time in unhealthy relationships that in the beginning they're just charmed by the guy but they start to see things yeah where uh, he's not really a nice guy but then they still don't want to lose him because he's so good looking or he's so good in this and good in that or whatever he's physically appealing they don't want to lose that so they rationalize any inconsistencies. And then they blame themselves. They'll say, oh, it must be me. I just saw it wrong. I misinterpreted it. 
See, they blame themselves. When they see evidence of wrongdoing, they rationalize it away as something else because they don't want to lose this person. Even when their own lives are in jeopardy and they get beaten, beaten, they blame themselves. Oh, it was me. I did something wrong. He's a he's a lovely guy. He never does this. And the fact that he does that did this shows you I'm the one who messed up. It's me. It's my fault. They always blame themselves. When this man went out in the story, yeah, in the story when the man said, I'm going to find us, a, we're going to eat good tonight. He wasn't looking for another deer. Do you know what he was doing? He went to another camp to find his next victim. Yeah, that's what he was going to do. I mean, that's what he did. So this is <laughs> this is vicious. Yes, yeah? so this is t- teaching young girls that you know, yeah, it's important to be physically attracted to uh, your partner. If that's all you focus on, your marriage will not work. You still have to find out if he's a good person. How does he treat his family? How does he treat his mother? See, in the story, he treated he, he abused his mother. Yeah, so you have to take the time to check the person out. How good are they? Are they really as good as they presenting themselves? Because some men they'll be good, really, really, really good to a woman, but to everybody else they treat them like shit. This is a bad sign. That's an elk man. Yeah, I once knew a girl in Switzerland, and I will call her Daniela. And I, I, this, this just was just a friend, okay, nothing more than a friend. And uh, she was telling me about her, you know, as we're getting to know each other, she was telling me about her past, and she, and I was talking about this elk man concept, and she said, yeah, I'm. I met a lot of alchemists in my life, and and uh, it says I learned from all of them, and that's never going to happen to me again. She said. So I said, "Good, I'm I'm happy for you." <laughs> and then I see her next boyfriend. I know this guy. He's from South Dakota, and he's an alchemist. I know him. This guy really uses women. Physically good-looking guy. She fell right for it. Hook, line, and sinker. So it told me she didn't learn. Yeah, she fell for another one. So <clears throat> this guy, he he's only with her because for him it's a it's a trophy. It's a blonde woman trophy. That's that's all she is to him. He doesn't care about what the way she really is. So I know that one's going to fail. But this one might be worse, though. Because I think right now what she's doing is she's rationalizing his activities away right now. Because this guy's a user. And he knows some things about our culture but I I can go as far as to say is that I don't even think he's Lakota at all I've never seen him before I've never heard of his name and he's trying to say he's from my reservation and I know pretty much every family name I've never heard of this name before I've never even heard of him 
So I kind of think he's a fake to begin with. Yeah, so there you go. Yeah, you see this you see this happening in in real life too. Yeah, that uh that um it's important to take the time to know somebody. And this is the kind of thing that you learned in the Tiosh by Yeah, that the girls, the women are teaching them, yes, it's okay to be physically attracted to a guy, but you have to go further. That doesn't mean having sex. No, no, no. That means getting to know him. What kind of man is he? Does he treat everybody right? Does he does he um um provide for these people? Is he a good worker? Will he be a good father? You have to look at all these things and they all have to add up. But in this situation, it didn't because he was nice to her family. He was nice to some, you know, to the men. But when he went back to his home, he was abusive to his mother. That's the inconsistency. So that means when he was being nice to her people, that he didn't really mean it. That he was being superficial. See, she starts to realize these things when she looks in this bag, in the teepee, in his teepee, and sees that there's vagina pieces in there. Then all these thoughts come to her that when he was being nice to her family, he was just pretending. He's not really a nice man. He's a monster. So... For thousands of years, these alchemists were a terror because there was no way to defeat them. Medicine men, holy men, they could not defeat him. Until one day, a man, a Lakota man, was standing on a hill he was looking for buffalo to hunt. He was standing on the hill looking around for buffalo and he heard a voice coming from some bushes behind him. He didn't understand the words. And he thought it was the wind because it was kind of windy that day. A little while later, he heard the voice again. This time he could hear a word or two, but he didn't understand it completely. So he thought, is there somebody up here? So he started looking around, but he couldn't find anybody. And then he he um, was going to go back down the hill, but he heard the voice a third time. This time he heard more words. So he thought, something is up here. So he started investigating. And he went to that bush. He started to follow the voice. He went to that bush. And when he, when he looked the bushes aside, he saw a skull there. It was an elk skull. And this time he heard uh, more words, and now he heard everything. And I will tell that to you tomorrow. I will tell you what this elk skull told this man tomorrow. <laughs> Keep you in suspense. <laughs> okay. Remember, this is thousands of years later. This this is the second story, okay? And this is going to, in a, in a certain way, answer the dilemma of the elk men, okay? So, um, 
we'll discuss. That's another. That's another scary one too. Yeah. <laughs> but you see how this Elkman story, the one that I told this evening, can you see how that could be worked into a, ho- a, a Halloween movie, a scary one? Yeah, so this was part of the training for young girls before they reach puberty so that they learn right away before puberty clouds the mind. <laughs> they learn right away to that it's important to 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 know, you know, when it when it is time to look for a man that has to be more than looks. Yeah, looks are important. But it has to be more than that, okay? So, um, so this is part of the training, and you see how how scary the story is. There's lots of stories like that, and some of them are even more vicious. You know, but this one is a bad. It's, it's a vicious one, <laughs> yeah. So, um, but this is coming from an old system of stories, okay? Eh, honey. Eh, honey stories, they're called. This part of the Lakota Star Knowledge collection of stories. Yeah, this is in my book, by the way. My book called Wichoha Otehike, it's in there. 